a streak of light, a frozen wanderer from another star. Astronomers call it 3 Eye Atlas, the third interstellar object ever seen. But its tail doesn't follow the rules. Instead of drifting away from the sun, it points straight toward it, like thrust, like propulsion. And for the first time, even NASA admits the resemblance is undeniable. It started small, then the numbers changed everything. On July 1, 2025, a sky survey in Chile spotted a faint dot. That happens every night. Most dots turn out to be regular comets or asteroids looping around the sun, like cars on a track. But when astronomers fit the path of this one, the track didn't close. It wasn't a loop at all. It was an open path, the signature of something that wasn't bound to the sun. That meant only one thing, an interstellar visitor. They named it 3I2025A1 Atlas. The 3I means it's the third interstellar object we've found after Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019. Right away, that put it in rare company. But there was another reason to get excited. We found this one early, with months to go before it reached its closest approach to the sun. That gave us time. Time to point big telescopes on Earth, time to schedule Hubble, time to prepare JWST. In space science, time is gold. As the first measurements came in, energy spread through research groups like a wave, schedules shifted, observation requests flew back and forth across the globe. People who had studied Oumuamua's brief visit felt a second chance arriving. They had missed details then because that object was already on its way out. This time, we could watch the show as it unfolded. And then, it got even stranger. At first, 3i Atlas acted like a normal comet. As it moved closer to the sun, the surface warmed and ice turned to gas. A fuzzy coma formed around the center and a tail stretched out. Everything you'd expect. But within weeks, something didn't match the picture in our heads. A bright plume sharpened, not away from the sun, but apparently toward it. From our view on Earth, it looked like a thin spear of light pointing upstream, as if the object were firing a jet into the wind. That visual alone would have made people pay attention, but then the spectra, the color fingerprints of the gases, added another twist. Along with common comet gases like carbon dioxide and a bit of cyanide, there were signs of nickel vapor. Nickel has been seen in comets before, but here the amount seemed higher than usual. Put the odd geometry and the unusual chemistry together, and you get a simple, sticky idea. It looks like exhaust. If you scroll through images taken by skilled astrophotographers, you see why people reacted. The plume doesn't smear or bend much. In many shots, it looks like a clean, bright line. Teams checked for camera issues, software glitches, and image stacking errors. They rotated the fields and re-registered the stars to make sure alignment wasn't tricking them. The feature stayed put. Night after night, more data stacked onto the same story. That look was all it took to light a fire online. A familiar voice stepped into the conversation, Avi Loeb, a Harvard astrophysicist known for bold ideas. He'd already stirred debate with Oumuamua by suggesting it might have been pushed by something other than normal comet gas. With 3 Eye Atlas, the sight of a sunward plume fit a new line of thought. He said, we should consider the idea that the plume could be thrust. Maybe a clever move near the sun to change the object's path by pushing out material at just the right time. In simple terms, use the sun's gravity for a speed and direction change while also ejecting gas like a weak engine. To be clear, he didn't declare it's a ship. He said, don't rule it out yet. That difference matters to scientists, but headlines don't like gray areas. Many outlets grab the easiest, loudest line. It looks like propulsion. All at once, a careful maybe turned into a loud, unavoidable question. When that happens, you need a steady hand to keep things grounded. NASA spoke up with a simple message. Strange is not the same as alien. Yes, the plume looks like a jet. Yes, the nickel is interesting. But comets have a long record of doing odd things. They're lumpy and full of pockets of ice. They spin, they crumble, they vent in narrow streams. Each of those can shape a tail in ways that mimic controlled thrust. 
Planetary scientists pointed out that we've even seen anti-tails, apparent sunward spikes, before. They reminded everyone that the way we see a comet depends on the angle between Earth, the comet, and the Sun. Change the angle and a harmless dust ribbon can look like a sharp sunward line. NASA's message was calm. Acknowledge the weird look, but don't jump to the hardest explanation. At press briefings, experts explained what evidence could help. Watch how the plume changes as the viewing angle shifts. Track whether jets on the surface turn on and off as different areas warm up in sunlight. See if the chemistry stays steady or changes with time. Step by step, they laid out tests the object itself would help run as it moved along its path. In short, be curious and be patient. So, what could make a tail look like it points toward the sun without engines or aliens? First, uneven vents. Think of a comet as a frozen world full of cliffs, cracks, and pits. When sunlight hits a spot rich in volatile ices, gas can blast out in a jet. If one jet is strong and stays steady, it can throw dust in a tight line. From far away, that can look like a directed push, even though it's just sunlight waking up a rough patch. Second, viewing angle. Dust from earlier activity can trail along the comet's path. When Earth moves onto the same plane as that path, those dust grains can line up along our line of sight. The result is an illusion, a spike that seems to aim at the sun. This has happened before, like with Comet Arend Rowland in 1957, and it required no rocket. Teams also started building simple computer models. They tried different shapes for the nucleus, different spins, and different jet locations. Some setups can make a realistic sunward spike, but usually only within a limited range of angles and times. That made it possible, without being common. Nature can deal this card, but the deck has to be just so. These ideas have history behind them. Still, the timing and how clear the plume looks keeps curiosity high. It might be a rare natural show, it might be something more. Either way, the only way forward is to keep watching and keep measuring. Interstellar objects are time capsules from other systems. They formed around other suns with different mixtures of ice, rock, and dust. When one flies through our neighborhood, it brings a free sample of that distant place. That's why scientists get so excited, even when the visitor is just a comet. Amuamua moved too fast and was found too late for deep study. We learned a little, argued a lot, and watched it fade. Borisov looked more like a regular comet and let us check boxes for chemistry and dust. 3 i Atlas feels like the best of both, brighter than Amuamua, and found early enough to plan a proper campaign. So, by splitting the light from the object into colors, we can detect gases and even guess at temperatures and ice types. By studying how light scatters off the dust, we can learn about grain sizes and shapes. By watching how the tail grows and changes, we can test ideas about how comets shed material. Every one of those facts is a clue about how worlds form, not just in our system, but everywhere. And if the plume and the nickel are unusual here, that's useful too. Maybe it tells us this object formed in a colder zone, where certain metals could stick around. Maybe it shows a different heat history. Even a no answer, no engine, no thrust would still be a yes for science, a new data point that sharpens our models. Still, there's also something else at play, the story we tell ourselves about what might be out there. A thin, bright spike pointing sunward looks like a rocket. That look hits something deep. We grow up watching launches, hearing the rumble, seeing the Earth fall away. We carry posters, games, and movies full of engines and starships. So, when real data even resembles a jet, our minds jump. We picture intent and control because that's how we explore. When experts say carefully, yes, it looks like propulsion, it feels like a door opens a crack. Not because they're saying it is, but because they're not saying it can't be. That small opening is enough to invite big dreams. People don't just see dust in sunlight, they see themselves in the mirror, reaching for the next chore. This is powerful, but it can also run ahead of the facts. That's why the planned observations matter so much. Stories are fine. Tests, though, are better. And the tests are coming up fast. 
There's a key moment in every comet's trip, perihelion, the point of closest approach to the Sun. For 3i Atlas, that comes in late October 2025. As it closes in, everything speeds up. The warming, the gas flow, the dust release, the tail's behavior. It's like watching a slow boil turn into a rolling one. This is when JWST can measure heat and chemistry in careful detail. Hubble can map the shape of the plume and track any changes in real time. Large telescopes on the ground can take rapid images to catch flickers from rotation or sudden jets turning on. The plan is simple. Watch the plume's choreography as the viewing angle changes and the sunlight hits new parts of the surface. If the odd sunward spike is a viewing trick, it should fade or flip as the geometry shifts. If it's a strong jet from one region, it might swing as the object rotates or as new areas wake up to sunlight. If it's something else, something that keeps looking like thrust, even as all the angles change, then the questions will only get louder. There won't be a second chance. After perihelion, 3i Atlas will head outward, dimming more each week, and then vanish back into the deep. All the more reason to make every hour of telescope time count. We stand between the known and the unknown. That's where discovery lives. NASA hasn't called 3i Atlas a ship, only noted a plume that looks like a jet. Maybe it's a rare natural trick. Maybe it's something bigger. Either way, measure, compare, test, repeat. Let data lead. For now, it's Sunward Glow keeps us looking and learning. If you love curious evidence-first space stories like this, like, subscribe, and share to follow the next chapter.